This patient is a 26-year-old male with a large central disc herniation, slightly eccentric to the right. He is a very athletic young man. He played Division I water polo while in college, and he injured his back lifting weights, specifically deadlifting. In spite of the size of his herniation and the amount of compression of the nerve root, his primary complaint was back pain with radiation into the buttocks. The first surgeon that he consulted with considered the low back pain to be an indication for an anterior lumbar interbody fusion. In my practice, this patient would always deserve the option of an endoscopic discectomy performed in an ASC rather than a fusion procedure. The patient indications for surgery are low back pain, buttock pain, compression of the S1 nerve root, and failure to improve with conservative care. The diagnosis, as seen here on the MRI scan, is a large L5 S1 central disc herniation with neurologic compression. At this stage, in a posterior endoscopic decompression of the spine for a disc herniation, we've safely traversed through the ligamentum flavum and established ourselves inside the spinal canal. The next goal is to be able to identify the lateral edge of the nerve root that needs to be retracted safely out of the way in order to expose the disc herniation. The way that I do that here is by using an endoscopic freer elevator to be able to manipulate the lateral edge of the nerve root, place it under tension, and then wand the cannula towards the patient's midline in order to release that nerve root up over the disc herniation. Now that we've got the nerve root safely out of the way and it's been retracted by twisting the cannula, the next step in the procedure is to deliver the herniation. What I like to do here is use the cannula and place downward pressure on the top of the annulus. And in my experience, I frequently find that the disc herniation is pressurized inside the annulus and that with downward pressure, the herniation is delivered into the cannula so that it can be grasped here with a pituitary ronger. As demonstrated here, the herniation frequently is pressurized by the annulus and delivers itself into the cannula so that it can be safely removed. And the benefit of this procedure is taking care of the herniation that's been causing all of this patient's pain and neurologic dysfunction. The great part of being able to do this endoscopically is that I'm able to retrieve these fragments of disc material through an endoscope with only a sub one centimeter incision and minimal disruption to any of the paraspinous muscles or associated soft tissues. For someone who's 26 years old and wants to return to high level athletics, this is by far the best choice for this patient. My standard post-operative protocol here is to discharge patients home from the surgery center on the same day of surgery. They are weight-bearing as tolerated. I advise them to take Tylenol and ibuprofen scheduled every six hours for seven to 10 days, and I give them a maximum of 10 tramadol or oxycodone tablets for breakthrough pain only. I encourage patients to make sure they walk twice a day for 20 minutes and return to normal activities as they see fit.